Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have our guest, the treasurer for Sheboygan County, very important position, Laura Henning Lorenz. Laura, good to have you with us today. Nice to be here. Laura's going to talk a little bit about her roles and responsibilities, very critical responsibilities, I might add, for the overall operations of Sheboygan County. A lot of folks today, Laura, might not be thinking about their tax bill because those come out you know, in the fall, late winter, sometimes too close to Christmas, some people yes. might say. But uh, you certainly are always thinking about tax bills. Why don't you please begin by sharing a little bit about your roles and responsibilities? Mm -hmm. When were you first elected? I came into the position in January of 2003, so I've been in the office just a little over three years. And it's, it's just been incredible. I've learned quite a bit. Um, but there's a good team in the office, so that makes a big difference. You know, if you have good people working with you, it, everything works really well. Um, in addition to that, we, there are several roles and responsibilities that I do have. Um, I'm the keeper of the investment portfolio for the county. And of course, we do collect taxes year round not just a couple times during the year. We do that year round. Um, we're, we maintain the county's bank accounts and um, file reports at different levels of government by statute on a timely basis. And we work a lot with the public. Um, we are constantly either answering phones or taking care of people that walk into our office. And um, we do that on a daily basis, Monday through Friday. Now, you just said this is your third year now as treasurer. Yes. You know, it just doesn't seem like that much time's flown by already. How many staff do you work with in the office? Well, besides myself, there are four people. Um, Jane Dragon is the office supervisor. She's been in our office just a little over two years, um, but she's worked for the county for 19. Um, Margaret Stewart has worked in the treasurer's office for 19 and a half years, but she's worked for the county for 25 years. Uh, Jack Verhelst has worked in the office for eight and a half years and he's been with the county for 12. And then Barb Schultz um, has worked in the office for one year, but she's been with the county for 21 years. Right. So, got some fantastic people working yes. around you. Yes. So if someone comes up to you and asks, well, what is the primary responsibility of your office? How would you respond to that? Well, our primary responsibility is to collect taxes. That's, that is our main responsibility, and like I said, we do that year-round. Um, so we have, you know, whether it's first installment collection or second installment collection or delinquent collection, we do that year-round. And mm -hmm. just to give people an appreciation for that, we have about $151 million operating budget in Sheboygan County, 44 million of that is from property taxes mm -hmm. and then there are other fees and state and federal funds as well as investments that you have a responsibility for overseeing and maintaining as well. Please yes. touch on that. Well the investment portfolio um, I report to the finance committee they are my liaison committee so I report to them every month with um, an update on what's all in that portfolio, what's coming due, what's doing good, what's doing bad, but mm -hmm. pretty much they can see what's doing good and what's doing bad by the report. Um, and then decisions are made as to how to reinvest depending upon the economy and what the markets are doing. Now I know every now and then we'll see a letter to the editor uh, suggesting, well, I heard Sheboygan County has $40 million invested in, in such and such an area. Why don't they tap into that to, to address some of their financial challenges? Could you please very quickly explain sure. that that's, you know, what sure. that's all about? Anytime you have any money, even think of yourself, if you had a savings account, would you just leave that in an account and not make it work for you? Of course not. You want your money working for you and every dollar that the county earns on interest um, is a dollar less that they have to tax their taxpayers. So, it's always important to stay on top of the investments. Um, I feel that, that we do that um, and that we're always investing in safe 
um, investments, which again, we do do that, and there are some statutory limitations on what we can and cannot invest in. And um, it's just, it's delightful knowing the money that's earned um, with money that, that isn't being used to pay expenses at the time. Now, besides collecting taxes, managing our investment portfolio, and just mm -hmm. essentially keeping a close eye on our, on our finances, uh, what other responsibilities do you take care of in your office? Yeah, there's, there's just a huge long list, but the, the basics besides collecting taxes um, would be that we, we are the central collection point of all deposits. So if um, the, um, the extension office collects some money, all of, all of the money from all of the departments filters down into our office for processing and then um, preparing for the bank. So everything filters through our office. That's done on a, on a daily basis. Um, we also work with the public, like I mentioned. That's always very important. Um, we answer a lot of questions from the public. Most commonly, you know, um, I'm preparing my income taxes right now at this time of the year, and I've lost my receipt. Can you reprint them? Um, one of the major things we're just starting to do, we're kicking off um, in the beginning of April, will be certifying the lottery credit database. And that's... Um, that will take us a while to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So, Now in the grand scheme of things, I imagine this isn't one of your top priorities, but one of the things that you help provide to the public is a, a beautiful atlas. Yes. Uh, Sheboygan County, I, I lose track of time, it may have been four, four years or so ago, we really took ownership for developing our own atlas. and. I think it's beautiful. I know we've received a lot of compliments about the improvements that were made through the Information Systems yes. Department and your department. Uh, please share with our viewers a little bit about the Atlas, when it'll be updated, how mm -hmm. they get a copy of it. Well, the, Atl the Atlas will be updated this fall in 2006. We're hoping to have that out, I believe, by October. Um, there's all sorts of people who use it, anywhere from sports men and women, mm -hmm. Um, to folks who just love and have a knack for maps um, because you have to realize there aren't just plat maps in here there are road maps there are all of the maps of the lakes in Sheboygan County with the depths on them um, there, there's so much inside of this um, edition the 2004 edition and in addition to that the covers always seem to be quite an interest point to many people where the cover on the 2004 atlas um, is from a mural that used to be in one of the county, the, the circuit court branches. Hmm. So it's, it's a very nice and um, piece of work that's produced by folks here in Sheboygan County. Very nice. Thanks, Laura. Okay. Laura, just to clarify, we talked a little bit before about some of our investments may be doing better than others. I think we should clarify that all of our investments are doing pretty well. Oh, They're yes. all uh, good investments. It's just that when interest rates go up, some of the investments, if we cash them in, might not gain us quite as much, but we hold our investments to maturity in general. So oh, yes. we invest only in good, solid uh, paper and bonds and yes. notes. Yes. Okay. Uh, you talked a little bit about the lottery credit uh, and gaming credit. How does that work now? Will people still get a postcard to certify that they still live in a household, or how will your office handle that now? Yeah, Chairman Guerin, we used to do that, okay. um, but the Wisconsin Administrative Code changed approximately three years ago, and that code now allows us to save taxpayers money. Uh, we don't have to print, um, order printed copies of postcards, mm. probably 30, 40,000 postcards. We don't have to put postage on them and label them and mail them out and get returns from them and then re-enter all of that information into a database. Um, what we're allowed to do now is to use our technology, which is what we should be doing. So what would take an enormous amount of, of cost and labor um, has pretty much dwindled down into we get to use our technology. Uh, we go ahead and we um, run reports out of our tax system. Um, we have our municipalities assisting us with telling us who they know 
does get a lottery credit and who should not get a lottery credit. And then we take that information and we load it back into our tax system, a much more efficient way to maintain our lottery credit database. Um, long term, what it's done for us, um, and, and we were just rather tickled and surprised to find out that during tax collection time, we had so many less people coming in and asking for lottery credits because we already had taken care of it um, prior to the tax bills going out. And now that it's done on an annual basis and not every five years, the records are much more accurate. So really then the citizen homeowner just has to sit back and wait for their tax bill. Uh, if in fact they believe they should get a lottery credit and don't, what should they do? Well, for example, if you have a 2005 tax bill and you're thinking, gosh, you know, I really should have gotten a lottery credit, um, a couple of things you can do. If you really did qualify for a lottery credit in 2005 and did not get it, you can call our office at 459-3015 um, and you can speak to one of the folks that answers the phone and they can just make sure that you did qualify and if you did, they can send you a late claim form. Um, the key to that is they have to be um, mailed into the state of Wisconsin before October 1st. So there's still a window of opportunity to claim um, a lottery credit. Um, otherwise, if you're absolutely sure and you don't need our assistance over the phone to, to get this done, um, you can go to um, the county's website and then um, click on departments and then click on treasurer. And then we have a link for lottery credits to get to a late claim form. Okay. Who really qualifies these days for a lottery mm -hmm. credit? Do you have to reside in a home? Is that the key or what might the key be? That's exactly it. You have to own property here in Wisconsin. So for example, if you own a home here in Sheboygan County, and let's say you have a cabin up north, um, you cannot have two lottery credits. You may only have one lottery credit in the entire state, um, and you have the lottery credit on the home that's your primary residence, meaning the, the home that you live in the most but the key is you may only have one. Do you have any idea roughly how many dollars come back to Sheboygan County taxpayers because of that credit? Yes, um, one of the forms that I'm responsible for filling out just <laughs> recently was um, by municipality and then in total. In total, Sheboygan County will receive $2.7 million mm -hmm. of lottery credit relief in the, just in this county. So it's, it's a remarkable dollar mm -hmm. amount. And then does the actual credit kind of depend upon how much money is generated in gaming and people purchasing lottery tickets, or uh, where does that dollar amount come from? That dollar amount comes from a formula, and that's all done by the state of Wisconsin. Um, at, in the fall of each year, um, they tell us that the reports are out on their website, and so we retrieve them. Um, the dollar amounts are by school district. So you've had anywhere from $65, I believe, in the Elkhart Lake Glenbeulah School District all the way up to $95 in the Sheboygan Area School District. So quite a range. Whether it's $65 or $95, that's a nice amount of money to be able to deduct from your property taxes. Okay. Thank you, Laura. This morning, as, as Laura knows, uh, we had a department heads meeting. We have a monthly department heads meeting, and I can't help but feel every time I meet with the department heads just what a, a great team we have in place here. And uh, though it's been three years, you're still one of our newer department heads. Yes. And I <laughs> uh, have made some real nice improvements in the treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned a, a couple, but please share with us some of the, the innovations, some of the changes you've made mm -hmm. in the treasurer's office to benefit the people of Sheboygan County. Well, one of the things I told you, I think, three years ago, actually two things I can remember, um, were that we wanted to be able to allow taxpayers to pay their taxes online. And we've been able to accomplish that. Um, again, folks can go to www.witreasurers.org um, and they can pay their property taxes online by e-check which means you either have a checking or a savings account, and then it's basically a wire from your account to the county. 
um, or you may pay by credit card. And there are convenience fees um, with each type of transaction that the taxpayer pays, um, but it's a very convenient um, form. We have measured all of the payments that we had during the calendar year of 2005, and we took over 400 payments online. So every year it seems to increase. It's becoming more and more popular. Um, the other thing we, um, I wanted to do was to document our, um, the tasks we do and the instructions on how to do those things, and we've been able to accomplish that as well. It was a pretty big undertaking. And, and I've noticed, and perhaps some of our viewers have noticed, that uh, obviously you've allowed now another option for people to pay their taxes that may be more convenient mm -hmm. for them. Uh, I know more people, I think, are dropping them off with a, with a, a self-addressed uh, envelope so you can mm -hmm. send the receipt back. But the other key thing I've noticed in the administration building is our lines don't seem as long. Or even when there is a line, people seem to move through pretty quickly. Um, what do you think are some of the reasons for that? Well, I think that we have folks that are very knowledgeable in being able to receipt the taxes. Um, in a very detailed sense, we've had some folks that are returning as, our, as temporary tax um, staff. So when they come back and they're familiar with the software that we use, it's, it's easier for them to do um, the work that they have to do. Um, I, you know, I'm not um, in the hallway standing with a stopwatch or anything timing the line, but in general I'll, I will ask folks, and I think that they've been waiting at um, our peak time, um, which is usually the last week in December, usually waiting about 15, some said 20 minutes. Um, and in general most people didn't think that was too bad, but the other options are very good options, and I always um, strongly recommend that folks use them because I don't want them to have um, to be waiting in line at all because we do have the outside curbside drop box which is very convenient for people and um, of course they can send them by mail or drop them off we have an interior drop box as well. As you've had a chance to develop a real good feel for the office operations you've made some changes shared some of those with us today what are some of the other goals, maybe more long-term goals, that mm -hmm. you have for the department? Well, um, in general, we want to, um, for example, take those documents that we've um, accumulated now for all of the different tasks that we do, and we want to make sure that they're accurate. So we're going to test all of them, um, have different people doing the task and going through the um, instructions and make sure that they're working. We'd like to, we've seen some departments have had um, a policy and procedure manual. Um, we think that that would be a good idea for our office. Um, just in general, those are things. We'd also like to continue with automation. Any, anywhere we can find some type of automation, we'd like to do that. Um, one of the things that we're testing right now and we're very excited about in the office is um, a remote deposit system. And what that does is it images all of the checks that are to be deposited to our bank and then instead of sending them to the bank by a courier or what have you, um, they are just electronically submitted. So we don't have to send those to the bank anymore thanks to modern technology. Now your office is somewhat unique in that you both have the role of serving the public mm -hmm. as a whole as well as working very closely with some other key departments of uh, register of deeds, real property listing. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, an important relationship there just to make sure that uh, property tax records are accurate and complete and followed through on. Please touch on, on that relationship just a little bit, particularly with those mm -hmm. you know, two departments. It's, it's real interesting. We are, um, work basically flows from one department to the other when it comes to property. Um, for example, if Adam, you sold your home to Chairman Caring, mm -hmm. and you would have to um, submit a deed to the Register of Deeds office, for, to Ellen Schleicher's office. So the process starts there, and the paperwork starts there. The next step is, um, that paperwork then flows to the real property lister. Um, that office then 
records that information in our land slash tax software that we share together. And um, then further, later on when all of the assessments are done and um, everything is checked out through an open book and a board of review, then later on a tax bill is eventually generated and that's where I come in um, in our office and we do the collection on it. So it pretty much is a, a full circle um, process and then um, we start all over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you find in your experience that because of that you know, relationship, the steps it needs to go through, uh, are there common questions or occasionally do you see a common concern raised by people that uh, you need to address or that we could help people mm -hmm. with? Um, generally, generally this all goes very smooth. We we have this pretty much down to a, a pretty good science. Sometimes it's a little confusing for taxpayers if they split apart one piece of property and they split it into several pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how does that affect my tax bill, or how will my tax bill be coming out? And um, in reverse, if you take several pieces of property and then you combine them together. Um, that's always, you know, how, how does that work with my tax bill? Mm -hmm. So in general, the answer to that is the year that it's um, split apart or combined, you still get a tax bill for, um, for all of the different pieces that you have. And then the following year is when you get the tax bill based on what the property really ended up being in the transaction. You mentioned something earlier that I think all three of us share pride in, and that's the county website. Mm. Uh, Chairman Gehring, I think, really lit the fire to get that going, and uh, the Information Systems Department took the lead, and every department had to participate and build it and provide information. And mm -hmm. you've really used that as a tool to help people in the community if they want to tap in, get some information, mm -hmm. they can do so. What's on the, the website that is helpful to taxpayers from the Treasurer's Office standpoint? Well, again, I'll go back to the county atlas. Um, besides being able to purchase that in our office, and then as well as the county clerk's office, Julie Glancy, and the Register of Deeds, Ellen Schleicher, it's available at the UW Extension office in Sheboygan Falls, um, and then both First National Banks in Plymouth, Community Bank in Plymouth, and the National Exchange and Trust Bank in Adel. But in addition to that, many people utilize the order form that we have on our website. Um, we also added, which is new as of last year, we also added a website for all of the county's foreclosed properties. And I brought um, a sample along today of that particular website. And um, it's a very, very nice website. Um, Joyce Schneider in the Information Systems Department and Dave Dittmer um, worked with our office to get that up and running. And it's a real nice website in that um, you can certainly find everything from um, how, do, how, do, how does this system work, um, where is the bid form, what are our terms and conditions, and then you can take a look at each of the individual properties that you're interested in bidding on. Um, right now we don't have any properties for sale, they are all sold. Um, but perhaps by this fall, there will be more properties again for sale. Outstanding. Outstanding. Are you um, able to track to see the type of use that's occurring? Or are you finding that more and more people are going to the website? To... Well, um, last year when we put all of our properties out for sale, we actually did receive sealed bids um, for uh, one particular property um, from a party not in Sheboygan County. Mm -hmm. So we do know that people are utilizing it and um, anytime we get phone calls in our office we do also direct people to that website and we help them to get onto the website. Um, all they have to do is go to www.co.sheboygan.wi.us and that's the county's main web page and from there they just click on departments and then they just click on Treasurer. Mm -hmm. And um, we have um, a table type format where you just look in the table and um, look for tax foreclosed property for sale. We'll take you to that particular site. Um, 
like I said, we have the county atlas um, order forms. We have links to the um, Department of Revenue. Um, we have links to lottery credits, and we, we use it for quite a few um, very common things that are, are needed from our office. Outstanding. You have really made it a priority to get rid of the in-rem property. I know in past oh. years it would kind of sit there and languish, but you really made it a priority to get mm -hmm. that, that property out there, market it, get those dollars back to the, the taxpayer. Yeah. We appreciate that, Laura. Well, thank you. Very good discussion. In 30 minutes, we covered a lot of ground, and I really appreciate the emphasis and focus on the website because obviously not only did our viewers get a, a brief snapshot of your important roles and responsibilities, but if you want more information, I encourage you to check out the county website, whether it's the treasurer's office or the other 22 departments throughout Sheboygan County. A lot of valuable information. Mm -hmm. And if people have questions after seeing this program, Laura, uh, what's the best way for them to follow up and get information? There's several ways. I mean, certainly they can just pick up the phone and they can call our office. Our telephone number is 459-3015. Um, we also have a, um, a means of contacting us through the website, um, through email. So that's another way that we, we do answer questions as well. Very good. Well, again, on behalf of the County Board, and Chairman Gehring, and myself, Adam Payne, it certainly was a pleasure to have you with us today. And we certainly appreciate that Laura Henning Lorenz, our County Treasurer, was with us and continues just to do a fantastic job for Sheboygan County. So until next time, please check out the website. Don't hesitate to contact Laura if you have questions, or certainly the County Administrator or County Chair's Office. Our number is 459-3103 probably throwing a few numbers out there today yes. but if you have suggestions on a particular department that you would like to see emphasized or an issue discussed we'd be happy to follow up so thank you very much for joining us